friends. Today we are going to be drawing a picture of Olaf. And in this picture, we are going to be able to see a foreground, which is up close, a middle ground, which is in the middle, and a background. Now, that's important when we're building an artwork because we want to be able to show depth, which means we can tell what is up close, what is farther away, what is in farthest, and it makes it have a sense of going back in space. I can tell that these trees are far, far away because they're much smaller than this tree that's in the middle ground and much uh, and this tree is much smaller than this one that is supposed to look closer to me. Also, we know Olaf is, Olaf is a small little guy, but he looks so big because he's standing in the foreground. He would be standing right next to us as we take this photo or, or draw this portrait of him. And so he is right here in the foreground. Then we have our middle ground and our background. Let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna need a pencil and you're gonna need some coloring supplies and a piece of paper. All right, I'm gonna draw with a pencil. Usually I do a marker so you can see, but I think if I press hard, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. All right, we're gonna start right about in the middle of the paper, and I'm going to do a rainbow arch for the top of Olaf's head. Now, you're gonna to want to draw lightly with your pencil, that way if you mess up, you can erase, but I'm gonna draw a little darker so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So that's the top of Olaf's head. To make it look even more like the top of Olaf's head, we're gonna do a stick coming out, because Olaf has little sticks for hair at the top. A Couple little sticks on the end of that. One that kinda comes off to the side like this, and another one that kinda comes off to the side like this. So there's Olaf's hair. Next, we're gonna draw Olaf's face, and his face is actually very oblong. It's kinda almost like a long egg shape. So we're gonna do his cheeks. To do that, I want you to draw a little diagonal line in, a little diagonal line in, just to show that it's gonna come in like this. And do just kind of a slight C shape, slight C shape, just slight curve line. And then we're gonna bring it down. It's a good thing I am using a pencil. Look guys, I messed up. And bring it down to curve at his chin, okay? Because Olaf kind of has a long face. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. It's not just a perfect circle like you see on a lot of snowmen where they have a circle head, a circle middle, and a circle bottom. He kind of has an upside down egg-shaped head, oblong, oval. All right, so next we're gonna do his eyes. And now I'm going to draw a circle inside, circle inside. I'm gonna leave a little white circle for a light reflection. And then if you wanna shade, go ahead and shade that in black, you can. Next, we're gonna draw Olaf's carrot nose. So we know that Frosty has a button nose, but Olaf has a carrot nose that Anna gives him one of Sven's carrots. So to do that, I just kind of did a curved line, slight curved line going this way. I'm gonna do a, kind of a diagonal line going this way that's an organic diagonal line, which means it's not perfectly straight. And then an organic diagonal line going this way because carrots aren't always perfectly straight, are they guys? They're natural, so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Put some little lines in it to look like a carrot. Next, what we're gonna do, so we're gonna do a little line here, a little line here on his cheeks, and connect those with a, the top of his mouth, which is just kind of like a smiley face shape. We're gonna draw the bottom of his mouth in a second. All right, next we're gonna do a wider U shape to do the open portion of his mouth. Remember, if Miss Hoffman's going too fast at any point to just pause me, it's a good thing of having Miss Hoffman on the video. So again, I did a rainbow arch at the top of his head. Kind of did a line in to show where his cheeks are. Curve line, curve line. Bring it all the way down and curve up. Drew his eyes, drew his nose, drew his mouth. Now, Olaf has like a big snow tooth in the front, so it's just kind of a rectangle shape. 
you have Olaf's face, and that wasn't very hard. Okay, next we're gonna do the middle portion of his body. It's kind of like drawing parentheses. If you've drawn parentheses before, some of my older friends, my kindergarten friends, you might not have drawn parentheses before. So it's kind of like a, a curve line going this way. It's kind of like a letter C. And a curve line going this way, kind of like a backwards letter C. And then we're gonna connect it. And then we do the same thing for the bottom part of his body, kind of like another letter C. Backwards letter C. And then connect it. And then next, Olaf has little rectangular snow feet. So we're just gonna draw a little rectangle little rectangle and Olaf has three buttons one on the top portion of his body and two on the bottom and they're gonna be organic shape but shapes because they're rocks or coal so just kind of like a wobbly looking circle <laughs> doesn't have to be kind of like a paint splatter shape doesn't have to be a perfect circle if you want them to be perfect circles that's fine but if they're rocks or pieces of coal they're not gonna be perfect circles you don't have to shade those in with your pencil. When you're ready to color, you can color them in black. Next, we're gonna do Olaf's arms. We're gonna do a line out. We're gonna do a little loop for his thumb. A couple of little loops for finger twigs. And then we're gonna bring it back in. You can do little notches to look like a stick, like little bumps on the stick. Do it on the other side, line out loop to look like it, the, his thumb twig, <laughs> loops like tall skinny rainbow arches to look like his finger twigs, and back in, you can do little bumps on the stick, make it look more like a natural stick. All right, and then we're just going to draw the ground under or kind of behind him so it looks like he's standing on some snow, okay? Next, we're going to start building up our middle ground. All right, to build up our middle ground, I'm just going to draw in another snowy hill behind him, but don't draw it through his face or through his hand. All right, so I have levels here. I have the foreground. Now I'm building up the middle ground. All right, so right here, I'm going to have a tree kind of standing close to him in the middle ground. So he's right here in the foreground, but a little bit behind him, there's going to be a tree. I'm gonna do line up, little line over, line up. I'm gonna erase the horizon line or where the sky meets the ground there out of my tree. And when you color, you're gonna color that tree trunk brown. We're just gonna leave it white for right now. Now, we're gonna make this tree look like there's snow laying on the branches here. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just kind of doing a soft diagonal line going down like this, soft diagonal going line going down like this. And I'm gonna draw like a little blobby shape on top to look like snow laying on it. Now, you're gonna go back in and color all this green later in between where the snow is, but for right now, you're just gonna lightly do it with your pencil you're gonna go out, 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 just lightly to start looking like leaves on an evergreen tree. Every once in a while, draw a snow blobby so it looks like the snow has rested on a branch. It's gonna kind of look plain at first before you get the green on there but that's one side of it you can see when you go back in with your crayon or your color pencil or your marker and color that in it really does start looking like a green evergreen tree all right so I'm gonna go the other direction just soft diagonal lines 
every once in a while draw a little blobby to look like snow that has rested on one of the branches. And when you color your tree in, you'll leave those white. Like the branches and the snow is just resting on those. Okay, so you got your foreground done, your middle ground started. Let's draw another little hill right here. And back here even farther, we're gonna have the snow castle. Now, the snow castle in our picture is actually gonna be about the same height as Olaf, maybe even a little shorter. And we know that snow castle is huge if you've watched Frozen, you know that snow castle is huge. But it's gonna look smaller because it is quite a bit farther back in the distance. And so the farther things are, the smaller they're gonna look in your picture because that's gonna show that they're farther away. So we're gonna start the snow castle right here on the hill. It's not gonna be tiny, tiny, because it's not way back in the distance, but it's gonna look smaller. We're gonna start with two lines up for the door. And we're gonna connect that with like a triangle top. Point at the top. Okay, and that's like the surrounding around the door, so we're gonna do that again. A little smaller for the door. Two lines up, triangle top. Okay. Now we're gonna do the surround around that. Two lines up. Like that. Triangle top. Now on top of that, we're gonna do two lines up. Triangle top, and then two lines up, triangle top, like a point at the top. <clears throat> We're going to start putting some on the sides, line up, line up, triangle top, line up, line up, triangle top. Remember to pause me if I'm going too fast. Line up, line up. I'm just gonna bring that one to like a point. Line up, line up. Bring that one to a point. Then I'm gonna draw some rectangles on this side. Some rectangles on this side. It's kind of like drawing a sandcastle if you've ever done that. Like this one's gonna be made out of ice. Draw a triangle on top of that one. Triangle on top of that one. Triangle on top of that one. Pause Miss Hoffman if she's going too fast. Triangle. 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 Okay. Next, I might draw a couple more towers right here. Go up, up, triangle top. And then I can put snowflakes on it if I want to. To do a snowflake, it's a plus sign or a T with an X through it. You can do little circles on the ends. I can do windows. I can do like triangular shaped windows long skinny rectangular windows however I want to do it decorate this any way you want okay and so now we have our ice crystal uh, palace and you can decorate that any way you want okay next when you get done with that I'm gonna do one more hill behind that start right here it's gonna stop at my tree I'm gonna go up and behind the castle right here. And I'm gonna put some trees way back there on that hill to look like it's way back in the background. Now, if the trees are way back here, should they be bigger than this tree or smaller than this tree? 
That's right, smaller. So they're gonna be itty bitty tiny trees. Look like little baby trees, even though they're not. They're just far away. So I'm gonna do a little stick. Lines this way, lines this way. Little stick. Lines this way, lines this way. I'm gonna do a few of those just to add some depth to your picture to show how far away this is. All right, maybe one more up here. And so you have reviewed foreground, middle ground, and background and created a picture that has depth. When you're done, you can color this any way you want. How I colored mine is I put just a little bit of light blue on the snow to look like ice has landed and has crystallized on top of the snow. I colored my tree green and brown, but I left the snow patches white. I colored my ice castle different shades and tints of blue, shades being darker blues and tints being lighter blues. And I left Olaf completely white. I didn't put any blue on him except for the inside of his mouth. He just needed a little bit of shadowing inside his mouth, so I colored it kind of a grayish blue. Okay, I hope you had fun with this. I'd love to see the pictures if you made them. Bye guys.